What's going on YouTube? Tommy's Reptiles here. And this is my Brazilian rainbow boa. I've had this snake for a little over a year now and it's by far my favorite type of snake. Are they extremely hard to take care of? Is the husbandry nearly impossible? Well, I'll tell you my firsthand experience. First, let me show you one of the main reasons people think that these snakes are just absolutely beautiful. The reason that they're called rainbow boas is because they have that incredible iridescent rainbow sheen on their skin. You can really see that beautiful rainbow sheen when the sunlight hits them directly. All right, it's getting a little too windy outside, guys. So I'm gonna bring him inside, show you his enclosure, feed him, and while he's eating, I'll tell you a little bit more about Brazilian rainbow boas. His enclosure is at the bottom left of my reptile shelf and is a perfect fit, if you ask me. I really want him to go inside this hide, perfect, because um, it's easier to feed him when he goes inside of this, because I'll know where he is, and then you guys can watch him eat. But first, I'll tell you about the rest of his enclosure, then I'll go thaw out his food and show you guys how he eats. So like I said, it's a pretty basic enclosure, four foot long, two foot deep, and I think it's like a foot high, maybe a little bit more. Um, it's got these nice sliding glass doors. I think, I, I forgot how much this enclosure was, but I think it was a little over 200 bucks maybe, two, 300 bucks. It looks like he left the hide, so I'll have to find him when it's time to eat. But let's keep going. So, I separated this enclosure into two halves. I call this side the cool half. It's got the water, it's got a hide, and in the hide there's sphagnum moss that I keep pretty damp. And so if he gets too hot, then he can go over here and cool down. Oftentimes I find him under the water dish, which I think is the coolest part of the entire enclosure. I have these branches that go across the whole entire thing. They're not that high, but he, sometimes he climbs on them. And then I put some uh, foliage, fake foliage back there. Now let's look at the other side real quick. So this is what I call the hot side. On this side, I made a little DIY cave thing that he can go inside. It looks kind of crappy, so I'm gonna redo it. And right above that, I have this radiant heat panel hooked up to an Inkbird thermostat, which is right over here. And I keep it dialed in about 83 degrees. And uh, so the right side of the tank is usually around 83, and then the left side of the tank usually stays in the low 70s, which is perfect for these guys. A very important thing about the thermostat that I learned the hard way is that I didn't have the probe connected up here and I wanted it right under the heat panel. So this area would be um, 83, but at one time it fell. So then the heat panel was fighting so hard to get the probe to 83. So it really made this side of the enclosure very hot. I think in the nineties, which is not good for Brazilian rainbow boas. So I went ahead and I stapled that to the hide so it doesn't move. As far as the lights go, I went with these LED strip lights which um, they do the trick for now, but I'm gonna have to replace them with a better option in the future because sometimes they fall like you see over here. This enclosure is partially bioactive. I have a bunch of springtails in the uh, substrate. So when he goes to the bathroom, oftentimes I don't find it. But if I do find that he goes to the bathroom and I see it, I always spot clean it no matter what. So for his food, I keep his mice in the freezer. I keep them in the bag and then uh, Right now his food is a small mouse. In the future he'll upgrade to medium, then large, then rats, and possibly other food items. He started off, I wanna, I wanna say pinkies or small frozen fuzzies. So what I do is I turn the sink on hot, let the water get as warm as possible, and then I just put the mouse in there, fill it up with water, put the lid on, and I let it thaw for I think around five minutes, and five to 10 minutes, and it's uh, usually thawed out and pretty warm. Let's go say hi to the frilled dragons while we wait for the mouse to thaw. I only brought two of them outside today, but it's a nice sunny day, and I let them take turns getting some sun. This is my oldest adult male moth. I don't know what he's doing down there. He's usually up in the trees and stuff. And then my female, my adult female is up there. What's going on, guys? Ooh. All right, let's leave him alone and go check on the mouse. See you guys. All right, the mouse is completely thawed out. So I just take it out of the sink, get a paper towel ready to go. So the mouse juice doesn't get on the countertop. And then I put the mouse right on there then if there's any water on them, I try to dry them off. 
Now let's go feed the Brazilian rainbow boa. All right, first we gotta find them. Whoops. Let's see. Oh, there he is. Perfect, right in the front. Right in front. All right, so I got the mouse. He's right in front. Let's see him eat. He's always been such a good eater, and I heard all rainbow boas are good eaters, so he's not gonna take too long to grab this mouse. Come on, come on. Come on, you know you want it. Come on, buddy. Whoa, there he goes. Look how fast this is, even in slow motion. These guys are so quick. All right, while he's eating, I'm gonna be going over a lot of the information that I've learned since keeping a Brazilian rainbow boa. Their scientific name is Epicrates centria. They are the largest of the rainbow boa subspecies and can be found in Central and South America. When they're full grown, their size ranges from four to six feet with the females being on the longer end of that spectrum. And the reason that the females are longer and larger are because they're the ones carrying the young. This was one of the main factors that I considered when I was looking to get a snake. I wanted a snake that got around a medium size. I didn't want any that got too big that I couldn't handle because this is one of my first snakes that I've ever had. One of the main points that I wanted to focus on is the husbandry. A lot of people say that these snakes are very hard to care for and that's definitely not true. And the reason that they say this is because baby Brazilian rainbow boas, also known as neonates, need a very high level of humidity, almost up to 100%. And a lot of people say that it's very hard to keep that high level of humidity, but that's not true. All you need to do is get the proper setup for them. So what I did, and one of the easiest ways that you can keep a level of almost 100 humidity is you get a plastic tote, keep the lid on it, drill some air holes in there, and it's easy to maintain 100% humidity. The substrate layer that I use for my rainbow boa now and when he was a baby is cocoa fiber, and I really dampen it up and then put it in the enclosure. And then on top of that, I put damp sphagnum moss all over it, and then you put the lid back on and the humidity stays from 99 to 100%. And it stayed that way without me spraying it down for months. And if it went down, then I'll just respray it. So as long as you can maintain that humidity and their temperature, which I'm gonna talk about in a second, you're good to go. I would consider these a very easy pet to have. And like I said earlier, it's good to have a cold side and a warm side so the snake could go wherever he feels like to thermoregulate. I looked online to see what their temperature range should be. And there was multiple different answers. So I just took the average of the cold side and the warm side, and that's why I have 73 and 83 for their cold and warm side. At one point I had the cold side at 75 and the warm side at 85, and just after watching how my snake was acting, I thought 73 would be perfect for the cold and 83 for the warm, and that's what works for me, so that's what I'm keeping for now. But if you get a Brazilian rainbow boa, it might be a little different just depending on your individual snake. A really cool thing about Brazilian rainbow boas is that they are so closely related to anacondas, they're essentially a small anaconda. And in my humble opinion, they look way cooler than anacondas, and you don't have to deal with the large size of those constrictors. Don't get me wrong, they're awesome, but they're too big for me. And as you saw earlier, after he struck the mouse, took it in, he coiled around it because he's a constrictor. And what they do is, anytime their prey lets out a little air, they constrict a little tighter, so then the prey item can't get more oxygen back in, so it asphyxiates them. And as far as their temperament, they're known to be very nippy when they're little neonates or babies. But once they get older and you put the time in handling them, they can calm right down. Since I change my Brazilian Rainbow Boa's water dish every day, I make it a point to take the water dish out, put my hand in there, pick him up, interact with him, let him know that I'm doing stuff so he's comfortable and knows that I'm not a threat. And he has not bit me since uh, I think the second week that I had him. So once they get through that nippy stage, they really don't mind being handled. And it's always good to reach in behind their head, not in front of their head. But right here, I'm reaching in front of his head because I want to help him so he doesn't swallow dirt and moss and give him a break so he can eat in peace. Brazilian rainbow boas really thrive in humid and damp environments. So it's key to have a water dish that they can fully submerge in. In the future, when I upgrade this snake's enclosure and make it a little bigger, I would actually like to put a little fish tank in there with a filter and everything. Maintaining that damp and humid environment really helps them with the shedding process. If kept in the proper conditions, Brazilian rainbow boas, average lifespan is about 25 years. And some snakes have lived up to 50 years old in some cases. On regular Brazilian rainbow boas, the main background color of their skin is maroon and this is accompanied by crescent shaped patches. These patches are typically bright orange and are outlined by a staunch black color. There's actually a lot of people working on making different color morphs for Brazilian rainbow boas so I'm pretty sure there's albinos and all different mixtures but I like the run-of-the-mill 
normal Brazilian rainbow boa the way it always is in nature. So I think that the best way to set up a Brazilian rainbow boa is to make sure that you have damp substrate, you have lots of places for them to explore, different temperature variants, different humidity variants, and they should thrive. Since I moved my Brazilian rainbow boa out of that plastic tote that maintained the high level of humidity, I wanted to ensure that my snake could always get that level of humidity. So those caves I showed you earlier are called humid hides. They're shoved with sphagnum moss and always maintain a humidity of 100%. After my Brazilian rainbow boa is done eating, he usually slithers off into a dark, quiet corner to digest or he goes in the water dish. If you really want to get a Brazilian rainbow boa but people are discouraging you, don't listen to that. As long as you put in the time and effort, maintain their temperature, humidity, set them up a good habitat, they'll thrive. I really love these snakes and it's been a pleasure keeping them and interacting with them. I really hope you guys enjoy this video. Thank you for watching Tommy's Reptiles.